my vintage loves, I wanted to show you how I get ready for most vintage events. This is basically my everyday vintage look. Liner, lashes, red lip, curled hair, ready to go. So come with us and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so here we are. I am bare-faced. I am just clean and moisturized and my hair is set, ready to be combed out after makeup. Um, and this is kind of scary because I'm usually not on camera without makeup on, but I'm about to put makeup on. Um, so I'm gonna start out with a primer. I'm gonna be out for quite a bit today so I wanna make sure it stays in place. Right now I'm using the MAC Prep and Prime. And any primer is good. A little bit in the back of my hand. I just spread that all over. You don't have to use primer. I feel like I get asked that a lot. Are primers necessary? It really depends on your skin type. Um, I tend to run a little bit oily. So it does help makeup to stay on my face longer. If you run really oily, it might be a good thing for you. Or you're very red or very dry. You might want to consider a primer. Or if you have older skin. Um, more mature skin, it can be really helpful as well. Um, but by no means is primer an absolute. Um, what I'm using right now for foundation that I'm really enjoying is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow. I combine two different colors. Um, I'm using a really, really pale one and a slightly less pale one. I am very fair, as you might have noticed, so I usually have to use the lightest color in a line. Um, I'm gonna use two pumps of that and one pump of the slightly warmer color. So that's what it looks like on the back of my hand. I'm using this lovely brush from IT Cosmetics that I love. Um, you, one side is for foundation, one side is concealer. I use this on myself, I use it in my kit. It is an awesome, awesome brush. So what I'm gonna do, I have two pumps of the lighter one and one pump of the slightly warmer one, darker one. I'm gonna combine that. And I'm gonna go in with it. I'm actually using the concealer side of the brush to mix it. And then I apply it on my face. And start buffing it in. I really like to kind of buff the makeup in. I think it creates, I, I like to buff the makeup in. I think it kind of creates a nice base. I do this to my clients as well. And when I'm on my, with my clients, I also use a wet beauty blender. How I do my makeup is a little bit different than how I do my clients' makeup. That's just like a personal preference thing. Because everyone is a little bit different. So I'm gonna go under the eyes here. As you might have noticed, I have dark circles. <laughs> I like to cover them as much as possible. I've always had them ever since I was little. I'm in of my family and I hate them. <laughs> if I could change something about my face, that would be top two things. Getting in there with the actual foundation brush. Going over what I just did. Make sure I get the neckline, the, I'm sorry, the jawline. Don't wanna be, have two separate colors. <laughs> or have that line of demarcation. So really, don't be afraid to just get in there. I'm a little more gentle with my clients. I'm a little, <laughs> a little rougher with myself. Okay. So I'm checking the jawline here. Making sure everything's blended. I think the um, around the jawline, around the nose, and under the around the eyes, are the most important places to look for blending. Okay. So, got the foundation on feeling, feeling uh, better already. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna move on to concealer. Always do foundation first and then concealer. Foundation will cover up most of what you need covered and then you go back in with concealer and do the little pieces, little parts of your face that need to be concealed. So this is Laura Mercier, Secret Camouflage. I'm using shade one because, because I'm pale, like I mentioned. Um, this is great because it has this is great because it has the two colors, the warmer color and the cooler color. So you can combine the two to match the different parts of your face. 
So I like to pet it on my hand. It is really nice to warm up the concealer on your hand. It, the warmth of your hand um, makes it go on a little easier. This is also a very dry formula if you happen to use this concealer. It's very dry, so you really do need to warm this one up. It's very important with this particular concealer that you warm it up. Um, and because I'm, but, and also, I'm using the same brush that I used to put on the, the foundation, so it's mixing with that and making it a little bit creamier. So I'm gonna go in and conceal where I need to, which is all of my blemishes. I had a facial recently, and I got very serious with the extraction, so I'm still kind of dealing with the aftermath of that. So concealer is really for redness, darkness, um, redness around the nose, darkness around the eyes, um, concealing blemishes. That's what concealer is for. And if you're blessed to have really amazing skin, um, you can skip foundation and just conceal wherever you need to. Um, I think that I need foundation and concealer, but that is by no means a rule. Um, if you know if you know you're going to be photographed, you probably want to consider using the foundation and concealer just to give a really nice smooth base. But again, makeup is fun. There are no rules. This is just how I like to do it. So I'm actually going to use a separate concealer for underneath my eyes um, because I don't want the as dry texture, the, the texture that is as dry as the Secret Camouflage. I want something a little creamier and I just really like this one. This is Maybelline Age Rewind. Get a little bit older, never hurts to have all the help you can get. I really like the color of this one. Um, something I get asked a lot as a makeup artist is how to conceal under eye circles. And the secret is to use a warmer tone. It's gonna feel really weird. You wanna go, you think you want to go lighter, but what you really wanna go is warmer because what you're trying to, what you're trying to do is counteract the blue underneath your eyes. So this one just works great with my skin tone. This is light um, and I just like to put that on the back of my skin hand again and then go in there with the brush and I really do like to use a brush to apply concealer um, that is another question I get asked a lot I think it just helps you control the amount that goes on there um, again you don't have to you can totally just put this straight on and pat it in with your finger but Brushes will help you. You kind of, I, I feel like there's kind of fear around brushes sometimes because um, it can be overwhelming because there are so many on the market. But I'm using about, I guess, nine brushes to do this look. Um, in my kit, I have about a hundred brushes, let's say conservatively, but you don't need that many. So if brushes are kind of overwhelming to you, just kind of know that they, they are your friend and they will help you and they can last a very, very long time if you take care of them. And there's no one particular brush line that I love. I, that you have them from all, all different brands and they're, it's really whatever works for you. Another thing about concealer and makeup in general, you can always cover discoloration, darkness, redness, anything like that with concealer or foundation, you can't cover, um, sorry, you can, you can cover col discoloration, redness, darkness, sallowness, anything like that, you can, you can change that with foundation and concealer. What you can't do is you can't cover texture. So if you have a pockmark or a blemish or anything raised or lowered, that will always cause a shadow and you can't cover that. So that's just something to take note of. So, it, all those things with all the filters, that's the only thing you can use to get rid of texture. So if you're having a breakout, a blemish, it's kind of just something you have to learn to live with. <laughs> you can cover it to a certain extent, but not totally. I wish you could. Um, okay, great, so we're gonna move on now. So this is the foundation and concealer. I'm feeling good, got everything covered. So I'm gonna use, um, this is Lorac eye primer. Um, my eyelids tend to get really oily, so if I know I'm going to be out for a long time, I do need to use an eye primer. Again, you don't have to use a primer. It's just helpful to have. 
So I, I do really like this eye primer, the Lorac. Um, I also like the NARS is great too. It's really a personal thing. If you have dry eyelids and you don't need it, great. I happen to have very oily ones that really need, really do need it. Maybelline makes some great eye primers too that have a little bit more of a tint to them, which is also great. There's so many good products on the market now, in general and also in drugstore. I think the divide between drugstore and, and luxury brands is really closing quite a bit. I'm using my fingers just to, because I, I kind of want to be able to pat this on and also I'm being very gentle with this, I'm using my ring finger. You really want to use your ring finger whenever you're using um, anything around your eyes, patting anything on in your eyes. All right, so eye primer is on. I'm gonna let that dry for a few seconds. Um, don't want it to be tacky, I want it to be dry. And um, okay, so next thing is eyeshadow. I'm using the Tartlet in, Tartlet in Bloom palette by Tarte. Tarte has a lot of great palettes and things in general. Um, this is, it has some great neutrals in here, which I use a lot. Um, and some, some with more of a shimmery finish, which I like as well. Um, if you're going for true vintage, they would have been using matte back then for the most part. Um, any matte palette will do. I have a few matte palettes in my kit and a few matte palettes in my own collection that I use them myself. So really, whatever makes you happy, this one is, has done me well. As you can tell, I use Flower Child a lot here. Um, but you know, whatever you like. So I'm gonna go in here and use Fla Flower Child. This is gonna be my lid color. I'm using a brush, a small fluffy eyeshadow brush. This is from the now very sadly defunct Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics, RIP. They recently went under and I'm very sad about that because they were a great brand. I'm just blending this out with a slightly fluffier brush. So I have my base co color down. Just for fun, I'm gonna go in with Charmer which is more like a true white, just in the middle of the, right on the lid. Give a little more pop. I'm wearing a 50s dress today, and so this is more of a 50s inspired makeup. I'll be doing liner and lashes and a red lip. Um, if you wanna be literal with your vintage interpretation, you don't have to be. Um, this is really my everyday makeup look. So next I'm gonna take a really tiny liner brush. This one, this one is by Sigma. MAC makes a great one. On my clients, I tend to use one that's a little bit bigger. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pre-line my eye. Um, I could totally go in there and use the liner, the liquid liner, which I'm gonna get to, um, but this is an extra step that I like to take because it takes away any chance of any gapping between my lash line and the liner. So I'm just using a really dark, dark brown. You can use black. Because I'm so fair, I tend to go more towards dark browns rather than blacks, but again, whatever you like. Uh, as you can see, I'm just getting right up in the lash line. close as you can. I love this trick. Um, I could, if I wanted a more natural look, I would just stop here and this would be my liner. This is a little itty bitty tiny blending brush, also from Sigma. Again, this is a great, I just love this trick as a makeup artist and as a aware of makeup. Like I just said, if I was going to just be doing a more natural look, I would curl my lashes and put on mascara and that would be it. But we're doing more of a doing more of a look look today, full glam. All right. So I'm not winging it out. This is just to get just to get that shape at the lash line. The depth at the lash line, I should say. Okay. So now comes liquid liner. This is Stila. This is their micro liner in intense black. 
I love this. It is amazing. It is super, super tiny. It goes super smoothly and it lasts forever, which is basically all I need from a liner. That's it. That's all, just those three things. Um, so this, this just came out. Like I said, this is a micro liner. This is smaller than their regular liner. And if you're looking for great liner, this will change your life. Um, again, I'm using black. So I just like to start it on the back of my hand. And you can see how easily it glides. It's really, really nice. So I'm gonna go in. Everyone has a different way they like to do liner. I kind of start, kind of edge my way into the inner corner. Edge my way into the inner corner. A little fuzzy there. Q-tips are your friends when it comes to liner. And then just gently work it out. Okay. So you can see I created the shape on the top of my eye. That's kind of the easy part of liner. Because it's the it's the kit, it's the flick at the end. That's the challenging part. So what you want to do, <clears throat> ladies, if you are lucky to have a beautiful upturned eye, that makes your cat eye a lot easier. I have a downturned eye. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out how to do liner on myself. I know quite a few people who have a similar issue, excuse me, have a similar issue with liner. So what you want to do is you want to do what I just did, draw it to the end of your eye, and then Look in the mirror. Do not close your eyes. Do not pull your eye out. Look directly in the mirror and figure out the shape that you want with your liner. So I want it to be about here. So what I do, it's going to look a little bit wonky. You want to connect it to the line you just created. And now I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. I use this trick on my clients too. I have them look straight ahead when I'm making that line, and that's how you want to create your line. Because we don't go through, the, through our lives, we don't go walk through our lives with our eyes closed. We walk through life with our eyes open, and that's how we want the eye, the cat eye, to look its best when our eyes are open. And like I said, this takes this is trickier for people with a a downturned eye like myself. And you know what? I have more on the bottom than I want, but we have Q-tips and we have makeup remover so we can fix that. <laughs> Don't be afraid of messing up a cat eye. Just take a Q-tip, take a Q-tip, take some makeup remover. I'm using um, Creoline by Bioderma. It's a French makeup remover. You can get it in most places now. It's better known as micellar water. Micellar water is everywhere now, very easy to get. Another great one is Sun Size by Makeup Forever. That will get through anything. If you want something, if you want that makeup to just disappear in a flash, that's what you need. I'm using full size Q-tips, Muji, or a lot of places you can get those little itty bitty tiny, tiny Q-tips. Those are amazing. Those will save your butt. So I'm pretty happy with this line. You can always shake the pen to get it started again. Start it again on the back of your hand. The back of my hand always looks like a war zone after I'm done because I have every color I've used on the back of it. All right, so that's my cat eye. Pretty cool, huh? And like I said, this took me years and years and years to do. Another makeup artist actually did my makeup once and that's what turned me on to this trick and it was Kind of a life changer. So thank you, Roshar. Um, so anyways, now I'm gonna do my lashes. Actually, real fast, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of a taupe color, which is Jet Setter in this palette. And I'm just gonna go a little tiny bit underneath my eye, my lash line, just to give it, I'm gonna go just a tiny bit under my lash line to give it a little more depth. So now, lashes. So I'm gonna go in and curl my lashes. I feel like people fall into two categories of lash curlers. Either they never use them or they always use them. I encourage always using them because 
Curling your lashes can make a huge difference. And if you're a not makeup person and you don't want to wear makeup, honestly, just a lash curl and, and an eyebrow brush can make a huge difference in just opening up your eyes. Or if you're going to the beach or you just don't want to put on makeup that day, curl your lashes, brush your brows up, and that, that'll make your eyes look bigger and more open. Um, so I am going to put on mascara now. When I do, I'm going to do false lashes, but what I like to do when I do false lashes is curl my lashes, put on the mascara, then put the lashes on. That's how I like to do it. So I'm using Maybelline The Falsies. This is probably my favorite mascara and has been for a long time. I just love it. It works for me. I use it in my kit. It's just, it's just a great mascara. So I'm going to go in there. Okay. I like to do... Because I'm really extra, I like to use a second mascara for my bottom lashes. This is Maybelline, what is this? Maybelline Big Eyes, and there are two brushes. There is the regular size one, which I don't actually use, and then there's this little tiny baby one, which I like to use on my lower lashes. Just always try and keep the mascara as close as you can to the root of your lashes, especially on the bottom, because you really don't want them to, you don't want the lashes to be fully done, especially if you have long lashes, because they will, cut, will kind of drag your eye down. And you can see I'm kind of, kind of pulling out, pulling off the mascara as we go onto the tip of the lashes. Try and keep it at the root is, is the key to most mascara, but particularly bottom mascara, keep it at the root. So now we're gonna do false lashes. I know this can be really intimidating for some of you. We already did a, another video about this quite a while ago, but everything I'm about to say bears repeating and it takes a lot of practice. So if you've tried lashes before and they haven't really worked for you, don't worry, don't worry about it. Give it another try. It's not one of those things that comes, necessarily comes naturally. We don't come out of the womb knowing how to do lashes. Um, it is easier to do lashes on other people than it is on yourself. Um, today I'm gonna use the Ardell 150s. These are pretty light, nothing too crazy here. I also love the Debbie Wispies from Ardell. So, but I love lashes if I'm gonna be photographed. If you're going to a wedding or a party and you know you're gonna be photographed, lashes are really good. It can, I know if you've never worn them, it can feel like a lot, but you will always look better being photographed. Okay, so I've taken the lash off of the packaging I put it on my finger. I like to wrap the lash around my finger like this, especially if they're new, kind of move them around a little bit, make sure they're flexible, because sometimes the bands can be really hard. And next I'm gonna be using the Duo Lash. This is a dark adhesive. I have my lashes here, I have the glue here. This is dark tone, you don't have to use dark tone. I find when I'm doing a smoky eye or a lash and you have black near your lash line, it is really helpful, but if you're doing more of a natural look, the clear is totally fine. Um, they also make some great latex free versions which come with a little brush which I like a lot but if you're using the regular kind of glue I like to use a tweezer put the lash in the tweezer put the glue on the back of your hand take a bobby pin get a little bit on the back of the bobby pin and then put that glue on the lash on the band of the lash I should say some people dip the lash in the glue. I find that puts a little too much glue on there and too much glue is kind of the death knell. Again, that's just me. Okay, so we're ready to go here. Holding the lash with the glue on it by the tweezer, with the tweezer. And then you want to kind of place that. Right at your lash line. You just want to make sure it lays down in the corner. Make sure it lays down in both the corners and that it's as close as you can possibly get to your lash line. See, I'm really
Don't be afraid to give it some time. Give yourself time to get it in there. You have a little bit of time with the glue to play around. Make sure it's placed right. Make sure it feels good. Because anything that bothers you even a little tiny bit right now will bother you a heck of a lot more in a few hours. So, same thing with the bobby pin sticking you in the head. And if you do it right and the lash band isn't that heavy, you really won't feel them after they're dry. You'll feel them a little bit, but it shouldn't be painful. It shouldn't be annoying. You'll probably be aware that you have them on because there's something up here, but you really shouldn't feel like, oh my God, there's something on my eyelid. It's, it's a very burdensome feeling. And if something is sticking you, if the band is sticking you in the corner of your eye, then cut out, cut out the length from the end and then try it again because if it's too long, it's too long and you need to cut it down. Okay, so the last step on the eyes is I like to put a little bit of um, a contour in the, in the crease. Nothing crazy. I'm just using again the taupe color, jet setter and a little bit of smarty pants from the palette. And I'm just going in the crease just slightly. No, no big cut crease, just a little. It just optically moves the brow bone back and the eye forward, so it makes the, the eye look bigger. Okay. So that's the eye. I'm gonna do the other eye, and then I'll come back and show you bronzer, blush, and the rest. Okay, so my other eye is done, as you can see, and we're gonna move on to the brows now. Brows are very specific from person to person, and they can really make or break a face. Um, I like to fill mine in a little bit and then use a little bit of brow mascara. Uh, what I'm going to be using today is the Senna Powder Brow Styling Pencil in Taupe Brown. This is a really great pencil. Senna is known for its brow products, so if you want to really get into brows, it's a great place to start. Eugenia Weston um, is the one who started it. She's an amazing makeup artist, and this is just a great product. They have brow powder as well, all great stuff. The great thing about this is it has a spoolie on one end and the pencil on the other, which I love so one less thing to carry around. So I brush my brows up, and then I'm gonna actually brush my brows down, because what I wanna see is the top of the brow and give it a little bit of shape. Most of the time, you don't need to fill in the inner corner of your brow. You really only need to fill, out, fill in the outer portion. So, it's, it's when you start to fill in the inner corner of your brow that you, the brows start to look heavy. So you can see I already got a nice little lift there. So brush the brows up, brush them down, pencil in where you need to, then brush them back up and see how they look then. I think these look pretty good. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more on the tail here. And then I don't think I need to fill in in the inner part. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Brush it up, brush it down, and then fill in that little bit of the top shape at the top. I'm pressing really lightly. Depending on how hard your pencil is, you can go a little bit firmer. But I'm, I, there was barely any pressure there at all because you can always add more. It's harder to take it off and then put more back on. That's a great rule with makeup in general. Start adding a little with adding a little and then build up from there. You can always add more. My brows are pretty naturally full. I could also use brow powder, eyeshadow, something like that to fill in. I'm just loving this pencil right now, so this is what I'm using. It's totally up to you. There's so many products right now. I'm actually gonna fill in the inner corner of this brow just a little bit because I have a little bit of a bald patch there from a blemish there from many, many years ago. So again, using really, really light pressure. Just gonna go in there. And fill in that little bald patch and I can get a tiny, tiny bit on the side. All right. Again, brows are really personal. This is just me cleaning up my brows. And brows really can make or break a vintage look. The 20s brow, the 30s brow, the 40s brow, the 50s brow, they were all very different. 
If I really wanted to go for a true 50s look, I would really go for the brows and really, really fill them in. That's not what I'm going for today. If you want to do that, that's cool. Um, this is merely just to get a little more fullness on my brows. I'm going to use a little bit of brow mascara. This is Benefit Gimme Brow in, I don't know what color. I believe this is color number one. A nice taupe color. Tarte makes a great one of these that I, that I love a lot and use in my kit. MAC makes one. I love this one and the Tarte one because the, the brush is really, really tiny, which is great if you're dealing with brows because you want just a little tiny bit. Senna makes a great one of these that I love as well. But just a little bit. This is also great if you have really light brows and you just and a lot of brow, but they're very light. You can just brush your brows with some of this stuff and it'll just give you a little more brow. So now my brows are done and I'm gonna move on to bronzer and blush and powder. Um, I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of bronzer. This is Chanel Lumière de Thé, uh, which is light of the summer. I love this one. I, as I've mentioned before, am very fair. So it's very hard to find a bronzer for me that doesn't make me look brown or muddy. This one seems to work really well on me. There's lots of other good options on the market as well. Hula by, by Benefit is wonderful. Um, Shiseido makes some really lovely ones too that are really light. The Shiseido bronzer, number one, is great if you have fair skin. So I'm gonna use a dome-shaped brush. This one is by MAC. Hakahoda makes one like this. Most, a lot of brands have a dome-shaped brush like this. I love this one for bronzer. I'm just gonna swirl it around there. Always tapping the brush. I should have mentioned that before. I always tap the brush before I, after I put the product on it, before I put it on my face. So put the product on the brush, tap, 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 tap. Usually actually take off a little bit of the back of my, of back of my wrist or my hand. And I'm just gonna go this is another one of those things I really only do if I'm going to an event where I know being photographed might be a possibility. Um, I'm really, I'm going around the jawline really, really lightly. I'm going underneath, kind of underneath the cheeks and up onto the cheeks. I'm using it as a slight contour, only slightly. Contour and bronzer are separate things. Contours when you really wanna sculpt something out. This is for warming up the face. So I'm warming up the perimeter of my face. I'm really just going all around the perimeter of my face, starting underneath the cheekbones, and then going up onto my temples and on my forehead, but basically what's left over on the brush. There's not much on my brush, because as I said, I'm very fair, and if I put too much of this on, I will look very weird and orange. So that's literally the extent of bronzer that I do on myself. I'll do another video and get more into contouring and things like that, but for now, that's all I need. And if you are blessed to have beautiful golden skin, go for the bronzer. <laughs> I'm more of a blush girl myself. This is Dandelion by Benefit. This is actually one of my favorite, favorite colors. I think it's super beautiful. This is an IT brush, IT Cosmetics blush brush, which is really nice. Again, I'm gonna put quite a bit of, fat of but I'm gonna put quite a bit of makeup on the brush tap it off, and then I like to go for the temples, the, the apple of the cheek, so nice little smile, a little more on there, tap it off, smile, and kind of tapping it on. And then I kind of like to just go under, take what's left on the brush, and then kind of go under the eyes, look up, go under the eyes, and it kind of helps marry together the blush area and the concealer area. Really subtle, really, really subtle. Like I said, I'm a, bl I'm a blush girl. Okay, so we're almost there. Next is just a little bit of powder. This is Chanel Le Beige in number 10, the lightest color. You can use translucent powder. You can use, this has a tiny, tiny bit of color to it, not a lot. Um, I use either this or translucent powder. I'm just gonna, this is, I'm using this more for setting. Translucent powder is a better bet if you really truly just want to set everything and mattify it. I'm kind of going all over just because I know, like I said, it's gonna be a bit of a long day. And I just wanna get everything 
really settled on there. And again, if you're going for more of a vintage look, you really want more of a matte look. So powder is a great way to achieve that. Okay, so the lips, last part is the lips. Lips are really what brings it all together, I feel like. And this is the nub of one of my favorite lip, lip pencils, Cherry by MAC. This is, this is it for me. This is the holy grail of red lip liners. I use this on myself. I use it on my, I use this on myself. I use it on my clients. It's just a great, it's just a great red. Um, I use it, what I like to do with lip liner is make the shape and then fill in the entire mouth. I actually did do this on another, on another video. Just a little concealer around the lips helps to just kind of define the lip line a little bit more. Especially if you're doing a bright color like red. So I'm gonna start down here. And for today, I'm just gonna, for today I'm just gonna be following the natural lip line that I have. Lip lines, lip shape again is one of those things that really defines the look of an era. So if you really wanna get into the 40s lip, the 50s lip, 20s, 30s, all that, you can really define your entire look by an eyebrow and a lip shape. Today, I'm just gonna be following my own lip line. And lip, red lips, like liner and lashes. It takes a second. Give, your, give yourself a little time, especially if you're new to makeup. A red lip really isn't... A red lip really isn't meant to be thrown on. Like to really get a good red lip, you have to give yourself some time to work with it and work with your lip shape, especially if you have as most people do, one lip is higher than the other, or your lip line might be a little bit wonky. Like, don't be afraid to just, you know. Give it a second. Okay, so that is cherry lip pencil, lined and filling in my lip. I love to do this. I could very easily finesse this a little bit more and then go out and be done. Um, but today I am going to use, because I really want things to stay a long time, I'm gonna be using Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. I discovered this recently. I was doing, doing some Maybelline shows for Fashion Week. And this stuff is the real deal. If you don't want something to move, if you want it to stay in place, this is the stuff that will stay in place for hours. <laughs> it is no joke. So. Be prepared to be wearing this for a long time um, and strongly recommend using this with a brush. Generally, if you're gonna be doing a red lip, I strongly recommend using a sharpened pencil and then a lip brush. This, is, this one is pretty skinny, skinny. This is by Sigma. Again, any lip brush that makes you happy. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on. Okay, um, so lipsticks on, lashes are on, liners on, all everything's on. I'm feeling good. I'm gonna go comb out my hair, and I'll come back to you with the finished look. See you in a bit. Here's the final look. I brushed out my hair, put on my dress and my hat. I'm ready to go to Derby Day. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this makeup tutorial. There'll be more in the future. Please click below and subscribe if you haven't already. And for more regular updates, please follow us on Instagram at myvintagelovevlog. We'll see you at the next one.